What's up, everybody? It's Coach coming to you with a Dead Zone Vault video. So now, um, in the vault, we have the Arias Contract Company. And basically, um, you're going to be able to print these uh, models from Star Saga. So originally, these guys were in Star Saga. These were the uh, mercenaries that you take through the campaign of Star Saga, the Dungeon Crawler. And then... As uh, Mercs or Living Legends, they were added to Dead Zone. So that was the only way you can take them. And now what they did was you can print them up and you can actually play them in Dead Zone with its own rules. So now the only thing is, is that they are a faction. You can only take these models in one group and you can't augment them in any way. You know, basically what you see is what you get and they have everything here. But... Let's go over all of them. So the first one here is our leader, our captain, Erica Delinsky. So now there's a few changes with her. Um, a few things are a little confusing, so we're going to try to figure it out together. So everything's the same. She's still 454. Um, she has gone. She has lost strategist, which um, a lot of people don't have anymore, don't use it. It's a recon role thing. Uh, she used to be 30 points, gone down to, uh, sorry, 34 points. She is now 30 points. That is always good to make it cheaper. She still has uh, three VPs, but she has lost Recon 4, and it is now Recon 5. She has gained combat team training, which is really good. She's still attack 2. Now, here's a few things. She's got special orders. So this one says plot armor, comma, specialized operations, specialized operation bunker buster, bunker breacher, specialized operation hornet drop, Special Operation Best Meds, Specialized Operation Covert Infiltrator. All right, so let, let's go over these. So she has, in order here, the way they worked it out. So if you can see right here, it says Special Orders Plot Armor. So in the plot armor is whenever a friendly named mercenary, not a sentry gun, is killed. Mark the position with a token. If the active model is in the same cube as the marked position, of a killed mercenary, you may spend a special order result as a short action to revive them. Place the model pinned in place of the token with one damage marker. If it was already activated this round, mark it as activated. So that to me seems like that, that she has that all the time. So she has plot armor all the time. If that's her... Um, you know, like a special order or is that like a special ability? It's it's not really clear. Okay, it, it's they should have they should have worded this better. But I guess this is something that she always has, and I think she's the only one who can do it. I guess because she is the captain. All right. So now you got uh, specialized operation, which is the first one. After deciding which scenario to play, but before recon rolls, choose one of the following army-wide special rules. So I'm assuming plot armor is not in there because it comes before this. If I'm wrong, you know, let me know. But I don't, I don't think I am in this particular instance. So you get to pick from three, uh, from four of these. The first one is specialized operation bunker breacher. Give one of the mercenary, one named mercenary, a disposable rocket launcher equipment with the following profile range: six AP, three hollow sight, one use. Both sentry guns gain the dismantle keyword. All right, so. I'm not too fond of this one. This is the one I, I wouldn't get. Uh, next one, Specialized Operation Hornet Drop. All named mercenaries gain the aerial deployment keyword. That's fantastic. I like that a lot. That one is awesome. Drop it in wherever you want. Sounds good. Special Operation The Best Meds. Three named mercenaries, not including Kirby, receives, receive a stimulant shot equipment at deployment. I like that. I like that a lot, all right? Not as much as aerial deployment, but I like that one there. Specialized Operation Covert Infiltration. Now, guys, all named mercenaries may use the elusive one keyword in the first round of the game. Now, I've looked in the books. Um, I've looked in Firefight book because I was looking. I, I cannot find elusive. You know, I know Coach is getting on in years, and uh, maybe I don't know where it is. But I got to tell you, I, I couldn't find it. So if you know what Elusive 1 is, I'd really appreciate it. Um, but then, you know, you only get it for the first round of the game. So, I don't know. I, I, I'll be honest with you. 
I'm going with all name mercenaries gain the aerial deployment keyword as one, and then the mercenaries receiving three mercenaries getting a stimulus shot number two. I'm not sure what elusive is. Rocket launcher, you may need it if there's like maybe a, you know, you got something big in there, maybe a strider or something like that that you got to take down. But uh, it's only one use range six, and there's a good chance somebody might uh, might miss. So you know, she she's good. She's got a lot of good stuff. Like I said. Um, she also has augmented, which we'll cover right now. When a weapon with this keyword is used in a range or assault test, the player may choose to augment the attack. If chosen, you may reroll two dice in the dice test. May be used by any weapon it is applied for, even if the other keywords on it would not normally allow rerolls. If used by a frag weapon, the rerolls apply to the frag roll. Not all roll required to hit the target declare the use of this keyword before any dice are rolled at the end of the current activation the model must take a three dice survive test two for each time augmented was used if the test is failed lose one health point armor and other keywords do not protect against this damage if this kills the model vps will, will be awarded to the opposing player all right so basically this is charged for a weapon i like it not bad it's something good uh, you know, if you know you got to kill something and you want to reroll two dice, uh, it might work. Three dice survive test, two. It's it's basically it's basically, like I said, it was charged for the uh, Veerman. So yeah, not bad. It's pretty cool. Uh, Erica Delinsky looking good. Um, solid leader. So let's move on to Elise. So Elise is coming in with a, with a bunch of, a bunch of changes, not as many. All right, she's. Uh, was 20 points she was 28 points and still 28 points she's gone from three vps to do v two vps she's lost her recon and her psychic ability or psychic keyword which um it, it you know it was there but you really didn't need it all right because her attacks uh that she uses are stun i mean i'm sorry are psychic and she still has the stun baton if you get into close combat. So let's go life drain is still life drain psychic. Tremor, range four, psychic stun. Mind scour, range four, AP1, psychic. And then you have your stun baton. So the only difference in their stats is instead of 554, five, she's 454. Four. So her ranged attack, or the old shoot attack, has gone down one. So that's pretty good. Uh, same amount of points. Everything else is the same. I love the psychic stuff, man. You go right through walls. You don't need line of sight. It's pretty good. Range four, you just can really hide her and drop all this cool stuff on it. I like the the, the life drain uh, when she needs some extra help. You know, in in her wounds, uh, tremor is good because you stun the people. There's nothing worse than stunning a person. Um, mind scour, okay. Range four, AP one. It's a psychic attack but it's range 4 ap1 but you don't need line of sight and you can like i said you can do it behind a wall i love it i love it i always like this character i'm very glad that she's in this list all right let's stop the stuff and let's get to the dwarfs my man ogan hellcare love taking this guy when i take the uh forge for all this i've been i've been bringing him with me um he is cheap and what he does he does well so um not too many changes from the first, but there's a lot of stuff that we've added. So let's get to it. Used to be 554. Five, now he's 454. Four. Okay, so he's shooting better. Shooting better at the same price. And VPs. So they made him better. Anytime you make one of my doors better, I like it. All right. He's got Energy Shield 2, Engineer, and Hacker, which he had before. But now, now he's got Headstrong. So it's going to be hard to pin him. All right, still has burst pistol, force field, uh, range two, grenade shield generator one. All right, so you know, um, yeah, it, it's it's good, man. You know, the, he's got energy shield uh, two, right? Yeah, he still got it, so it's good right there. Um, now the only thing is his claw is better, all right, because his claw in close combat, it's got companion, and it's got smash. All right, which he didn't have before. It's great because basically the artificers have that. Now he's also taking the two sentry guns. He doesn't. Ha he didn't have this in the uh, in the regular rule book. This is from Star Saga. You know when you got the Arise contract, you're getting two sentry guns, 
They shoot on four, survive on fives, one health point each. Uh, size one, you put it on a 40 mil base. And it's basically the make Mark II Hellstorm rifle, range 8 AP1. It's great. It's great. Good stuff, man. Construct and remote, he's an engineer, so it works out good. Uh, Ogan got a lot better. He's bringing, like I said, force field grenades, uh, force shield grenades. He's bringing two sentry rifles. Um, yeah, awesome. Really like it. All right, so if many of you remember Denzel on the podcast and we did those audio dramas, uh, you know, the guys got it together. This was me. I was Francisco. Francesco, the devil, Salvaggio. All right, so he's got a bunch of new things and they took a new things out. So let's get together with this. All right, number one, uh, his shield, all right, his armor. He's got no armor, all right? Survivor 5 went to Survivor 4. Good stuff. So no armor, but better survive. Uh, he's locked Tactician 1. Yeah, I don't know why. He's not a leader, all right? His Heavy Flamer is still Range 3 AP1. It burns, but he took out Volatile. That is much better. That is much better for him. He's gone f still 25 points, but he's 3 VPs down to 2 VPs now. Okay, much better. 25 points. Recon of 4 Plus is out because he is not a leader. And you have Fire Control, which is new. I like that, Fire Control. So you're going to be uh, shooting more than once or you're shooting another uh, uh, something else. You know, maybe you could shoot the Heavy Flamer and then throw the grenade. The, uh, he's got Weight of Health 1. All right, so you'll be rolling uh, wounds, which is a nice thing to have. So now, I think uh, this was in the FAQ, but it's one use. It's propane bomb, range three, one use, all right, frag four grenade. All right, a frag four grenade, it's pretty good. Um, I, I would have liked to see the propane bomb. It's a frag four, but I would like to see it burns. All right, so like, let's just say, you know, a guy makes, you know, runs an A train and survives, but he's on fire. Because he's all about this. You know, he's got the burnt face from the uh, fire in the past. He's done uh, some bad things. He's the devil. People are scared of him. But, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty cool, right? 25 points, not bad. You know, uh, not having the armor, but survive four with way to health one makes a big difference. So, yep, Salvaggio, the devil. Okay, so next is Kira Nikolovsky, all right? Uh, before we go on, if you notice in the picture... On the vault, she is not in there. So what happens is you got to download the file, and then Kira's in there. So her picture is not on the uh, you know the monthly pack, but she is in the files. So I, we, Andrew and I, you know, Andrew actually brought it up and pointed it out. And we looked for it. I says, you know what? Let me let me download the file, and she was in there. So if you don't see her, don't worry about it. She's there. So she's got a lot of stuff going on here. So let's let's start here. All right. Uh, she moves on a one to two, but I don't know. I, I think she's been hitting the track because now she's moving two to three. I like that a lot. She was five across the board, and then she's actually five, five, five across the board. But now she's better. She is four, four, five. All right. So she's got a better range, better fight, same survive. Okay, good stuff. Uh, she's still a medic. Tactician one is gone, and she is not a hacker anymore. So. That's, uh, I guess, you know, you're not a hacker, all right? So she's lost the sedative injector, which is stun. She's lost adrenaline shots and stimulant shots, all right? So she still has the sedative injector, all right, which is uh, now called the sedative dart, which is close combat and stun. She's got a holdout pistol, range two, and she's got the toxic injector in close combat, toxic one, all right? Um... You know, I, I kind of like the, the old one. The set of injector, range 2 stun. Or set of injector, range F stun. You know, I don't know why you took it out. I think I think she should have had it. Or maybe stun was a little too powerful. Stun is really, really a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, part of Dead Zone. You know, activating people, man. It's just, it's crazy. So she's gone from 24 points to 20. And she's lost one VP, but she's also won all that all that stuff. She lost her tack, so but she's the only medic you got in the crew. Um, she's pretty good. The model is awesome. All right, I like to print it up again, maybe paint it a different color than I have before, but she is really good. And uh, also, she's lost recon, so she's not uh, not in the leader category. But yeah, Kirinov Golovsky, I think she's making Adrian very proud. 
All right, one of my favorite models and the original Merc that Andrew got all those years ago when we went to Adepticon. I think it was 20, 2011, 2012. I'm not sure. But this was one of them. It was Recon and Wrath. Those are the two we got. Got a big differences here. So let's start. He was five tree tree. Now his ranged attack is four. His fight of three, but his survive went up two points. Two points. Two points. All right. Um, three to five, man. That's that's harsh. That really is. So that's armor one, two health points, size one. Uh, he's got the Praetorian pistol, which it was range three, AP one. It burns now. It is just basically range two, AP one. So you took out the range one run range, and it burns. Yeah, I don't know about that, guys. I don't know, man. And then now let's look at Blade of the Seven range. F, which is combat, AP1. It has gone to AP2 and Frenzy 1. But if you look on top, he's lost one Frenzy. So basically, Frenzy 2 is now down to Frenzy 1. All right. He's got the charged ability, just like the, um, the, 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 the Veerman. Uh, he's got Headstrong, which gets him up, and Tough. So now, Survive on a 5 with Tough. Yeah, he already had tough. I don't see why uh, he's gone up five points from 32 to 37 with still three VPs. All right, listen, he's a beast, man. Uh, in combat, AP2, Frenzy 1, fight on a three. Not bad, very good. It's tough, no problem. Charge is very situational. Um, bringing down his ranged attack to four is good, but then... You know, it's, it's a pistol, range two. So you're going to be two away. You're going to shoot. And then you could use charge to get in there. But, yeah, I don't know. He, he, this is this is the one that's that's uh, not too good. I would have kept him at 32. Um, or or raise him to 37 and give him AP2 Frenzy 2. That's, that's what I would have liked to do. Headstrong is okay. Charged, eh. You know, he doesn't really need it. And then range, but he's got a range two pistol. So it's kind of silly. Um, but you have to take him with this. You can't uh, switch him out. So, yeah, this is the one I'm not happy about. I think I think they could have done a better job with this one. Okay, so the last one is Kirby. All right, we got a bunch of different things going on here. So now, five six five across the board has not changed. Rules on a two to three. He's got one armor, two health points. Okay, two health points, and he size one. All right, so now. His laser, laser is still range 5, not back electrical discharge as his close combat weapon. Don't get Kirby in close combat, people, because he fights on a 6. So even though he has armor 1, doesn't matter. Does not matter, all right? So now he has lost Agile, and he's gone from 16 points and 2 VPs to 20 points and 1 VP. So now we're moving him up 4 points, but down 1 VP. Let's see if it's worth it, all right? He's got, uh, he's a construct engineer. Now, he's lost Agile, but they gave him Flight, which I feel is a lot better. Okay, he moves two to three. You get him on a top row, and he can jump over like he's got a jetpack um, or a jump pack. That's great. That, Like I've always said, the jump packs are really underrated in Dead Zone. You know, they are really good. I think they're excellent, all right? Special Orders overcharge the system. Now, he has his own Special Order. All right, so something new, something cool. I like I like the little bit of change. This is stuff I've been saying we should be doing for years in Dead Zone. All right, so, I mean, they listened to me a few years later, but that's okay. I'm not bitter. So, overcharge the system. Kirby may use a special action when standing in a queue containing an objective terminal to overcharge the system. Choose an enemy model in another queue containing an objective slash terminal. Both must take a three dice, five plus survive test with... Hackers gaining a plus one dice modifier. If the enemy model fails, they are subject to not back in a random direction. So basically, you're in you're in the terminal. He's doing the old R2D2 hacking the system, overcharges the system, 
and then the terminal will knock you back in a random direction. So you, I guess you'd roll a dice and uh, see which direction it goes. That might be cool. You can slam him against the wall, throw him into another cube, starts a fight, and he can't fight back because you can only stand up and survive. So it's it's a cool little thing. So, um, you know, it, it's good because if you don't have any terminals, but you have objectives, which most of the games do, all right, you're going to have to, well, I think all of the games do, uh, you can do that. So say someone's standing on an objective, you can maybe knock them back or throw them off. That's what, that's pretty good. I, I like that. It's pretty cool. Um, I find that this is, uh, Kirby's all right though. Um, overcharge the system. Is it worth four points? Maybe, maybe, but that's basically what he's going to do. All right. Uh, He's got a laser, range 5, shoots on a 5 with knockback. All right, so you're going to have to win the dice to get that going. The move of 2 to 3 makes it better. So, I mean, if you're going to take the Arise Contract dudes, you're going to have to take Kirby. Um, this is a guy that's going to sit on the objective and throw people off the objective. But, like, when the objectives are close, it might not be a cute, uh, a, a smart thing to put them in the cube you know, next to him, he's got to have to do stuff like that, or maybe he can get in there and then overcharge the system, um, both must take a three dice, five tests with hackers getting plus one, he is a hacker, so he gets plus one dice modifier in the end, if the enemy minor falls, they are subject to knock back in a random direction, so basically, I think if you hack it, you could throw him back, uh, he is a construct, so it doesn't matter, he won't get pinned, he is a hacker, so you don't have to worry about it. And he has flight, so even if he gets knocked off the building, he'll just float like a butterfly to the floor. So that is the Arias contract. All right, so all in all, I think this is a good thing. I like the fact that we are showing off some things that Dead Zone can do, all right? Uh, Dead Zone is not dead as far as we're concerned. I'm glad that they're doing this. This is a direct relation to the fact that it's in the vault, and why don't we make some rules for the vault? I think that's a good idea. I've been saying they should... I mean, we've done... When I was on the rules committee, we've done the special rules, special lists that are, are themed. And we love it. I mean, if you've been watching the past few battle reports we did, they've all been... have a theme to them. And it makes it a little bit more fun. Uh, Andrew did one where he took all goblins. Everybody says, oh, well, you should have took this. You should have took that. You should have took this. Correct. Those are orcs. Or marauders, they are not true goblins, and he was sticking to the fact fact that he was running goblins. So um, having a theme list like this is pretty cool. I think that this is a great idea. I want to see more of this. I think we should make our own. I think you should make your own, because Dead Zone is really um, for us and just house rule stuff. I mean, we house rule stuff all the time because it makes it more fun, and this is going to fit right into it. But I got to tell you. I'm looking forward to this. So uh, if you see on the screen now, we have our Patreon guys up there. We want to thank them very much for uh, helping support the channel and helping us do things. We've uh, done a lot of new things this 2024, and we're really happy with it. As you can tell by the cool new beginning, and on the screen right now, there are super awesome videos that you should definitely, definitely watch. And if you are not a subscriber, this is your first time here, why don't you subscribe? It really helps us out. Give us a thumbs up. Helps us get out there. If you enjoyed this or if you listened to this or you just want to just really just not hear what I'm saying, give me a thumbs up anyway because I really would make my day. All right? Guys, thanks. Keep rolling eights. I'll see you on the table.